Okay, ready, everyone? Fine. Uh, good morning. Let's uh, pray and uh, begin today. So, um, anyone from the on campus batch to pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity that you gave us. Uh, Lord, thank you. I pray for that we will learn, we will that Pastor will tell us and Pastor will teach us and you guide us and give your knowledge so that we could understand your word properly and Lord, I give you all honor and all glory and submit in your hands and this pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Sure. So um, we were talking about intercession and a deep form of intercession, which is known as um, uh, travailing in prayer. And today we'll continue to pray, uh, continue to speak about praying for others. But uh, we look at different categories, you know, like praying for others. How do you actually pray for your family? How do you pray for uh, the church? How do you pray for other believers? Um, there are certain scriptures that we can look at in the word of God and we can pray on the basis of those scriptures. But uh, in the beginning, I just want us to understand that God has given us this opportunity to serve with prayer. We've seen prayer as um, a way to commune with God or to speak to God, to ask God for what we need. Uh, we've also talked about the fact that prayer is a way in which we can exercise our spiritual authority. Uh, but another aspect of prayer is that prayer is a ministry. We can pray for others and we can serve others through our prayer. Um, and um, when we talk about praying for others, Okay, we can consider uh, a particular individual in the Bible. Uh, his name is uh, Epaphras. Epaphras was one of the leaders whom Paul trained up. Um, and uh, this training happened during the third missionary journey of uh, Apostle Paul. And this man, Epaphras, was uh, from a city known as Colossae. So if you know the uh, book of Colossians, Right? So Epaphras is from that city of Colossae. Uh, he had come to Ephesus where Paul was teaching and that's where he trained up this man, Epaphras. Okay? Uh, but one of the things about Epaphras that we study is that he was a man of prayer. Uh, he was a man who prayed for his own people in Colossae or the Colossian people. But there are two more cities which are listed um, uh, whom he prayed for. Okay? Herapolis and um, Laodicea. These are two more cities that were close to Colossae. And, um, you know, uh, we, we find that Epaphras was a man who, did, who prayed for these places. Now, think about this. When it comes to prayer, right, uh, Epaphras praying for Colossae or um, Paul praying for the cities whom he established. Now, Apostle Paul, he could have planted something like 20 churches, okay, when we read his journey and his ministry. And he always says that I'm praying for the churches. I'm praying for the churches. Now, these churches were far away from wherever Paul was, because Paul was still traveling, right? He was traveling a lot. Uh, but the beauty of prayer is that there is no distance in prayer. So Paul was somewhere, but he was praying for cities which were somewhere far away. Uh, Epaphras was praying for, you know, certain cities. And it's possible to be anywhere, but to touch uh, a particular place or a group of people or people whom we care for through prayer. And uh, that is the privilege or the advantage which we have. So we can pray. We can pray for anyone. 
we can pray for people who are far away uh, and uh, there is no limitation as far as prayer ministry is concerned okay uh, through distance uh, and so uh, today i just want us to consider this ministry of praying for others now we all pray for other people uh, but what we are talking about is to go to the next level so praying for others a little bit here and there in our daily prayers or when somebody asks us to pray for them that's good but we can go to another level what is that level to intentionally pray for others uh, it becomes a ministry right it becomes our service uh, so i remember i was just um, you know start, uh, trying to learn about one particular subject uh, about the subject of fasting so i was looking at different resources i was reading you know different articles and listening to some people so there was one lady uh, whose uh, interview i was listening to one very elderly lady and um, she was talking about how she practices uh, fasting and prayer and i was so amazed to learn that in her daily lifestyle uh, for maybe about a year or, or something like that it's a little extreme okay i don't recommend it to anyone but god put a burden in her heart for a certain place uh, these are people that she does not even know uh, but because she had a burden for those people she was sharing about how um, she was skipping a meal every day for one year to pray for those people now she does not even know those people they are not even her relatives or nobody to her but uh, i was so blessed to see that there are people like that uh, who have a burden to pray for others whom they don't even know they have no benefit by praying for such people but uh, she was sharing about how she has been doing it for about a year because she felt god wants her to pray for those people so she's fasting and she's praying uh, so you see that sometimes right uh, god calls us to to pray to stand in the gap in prayer so when we read about all the the missionaries we read about uh, men and women of god uh, who have uh, been part of the awakening um, you know the great awakening or the revivals you'll find that there were a lot of people who invested time in prayer because prayer is very key to see the move of god without prayer nothing happens uh, so we'll read later on i have been telling you about uh, this person called john hyde he is known as praying hyde so he had come to punjab sialkot and over there he spent many years of his life and uh, the only primary thing that he wanted to do was to pray for that region of of punjab okay so he spent a good amount of time his life in prayer uh, and he also invited people to come join him for prayer meetings so they would have a prayer meetings you know it'll go on like morning to evening it'll go on so why all this not that uh, you know this is his city or his country nothing like that isn't it but there is a ministry in prayer which we can pursue so when god puts something on our hearts maybe he can put a region he can put a place or uh, he can put a group of people we may feel like we want to pray for ministers of god we may feel like we want to pray for the poor or uh, you know uh, something else you can just consider the women the children so some burden which is on our hearts we can go from uh, just praying normally during our prayer times into something known as a prayer ministry where we invest time in prayer and we uh, uh, touch them through our prayers so prayer ministry is at another level are you all understanding what i'm saying okay normally we all pray but that's not what i'm speaking about i'm speaking about practicing it like a ministry prayer okay so uh, it is possible to pray that way and have a ministry in prayer um, and bless people so it's a it's a great ministry to pray because uh, you know we are partnering with god uh, to see god's power released we are uh, overthrowing the powers of darkness through our prayer all these things are happening but it's also a very challenging ministry why anyone why is it challenging if let's say god calls us for ministry in prayer why is it challenging what can be some of the difficulties or um, 
you know um yeah, like it's it's a how do you say it's not easy what makes it difficult prayer ministry sister because satan hinders okay yes satan hinders it that's true um anything else weaknesses uh weaknesses meaning yes the the weakness of our flesh uh it's not easy to push in prayer somewhere we feel like okay i'm tired or i'm not able to focus so our flesh it hinders us that's a a reality yeah so we have to push past that to engage in uh, in prayer ministry okay uh, anything else anything else we don't we don't see it in the natural okay fine we have to trust god we have to we need faith right to continue in in prayer that's true we don't see it in the natural we need to wait to see the results all this can be very tough anything else anything else which makes prayer ministry hard or tough main thing is flesh so our flesh doesn't like it you remember jesus is disciples they slept off right and jesus had to tell them what is this you know you can't even pray for one hour you can't even help me in prayer for one hour okay so overcoming the flesh is one of the biggest challenges uh over and above anything else what okay compare it with other ministries something like preaching teaching compare it with that prayer ministry ha huh. hmm yeah Hmm. Yeah. No, but if God calls us for uh, prayer ministry, let's say uh, he he says, "Okay, you, I want you to be an intercessor." So you'll also have to spend time like a like a preacher or a teacher. No, you have to put that kind of time into prayer. So does it make sense? Yeah. So. the same thing because it's important god is calling us for that okay it looks like you can't think of any other uh, hindrance but uh, what about you know when people are preaching teaching they're at the pulpit people know them right so there is a sense of whether you like it or not some sense of reward like oh people know my name they think i preach well i teach well so people's appreciation um you know people's recognition it's it's kind of there in other ministries like let's say we sing or we do some social work people will know oh this brother is doing such a good work there will be some appreciation but when it comes to prayer ministry uh it's hard because nobody may know how much you're praying you're praying inside okay only before the lord so when it comes to recognition uh we may lack recognition in prayer ministry that makes it even more hard we should have a lot of um, uh, what can i say uh, strength of character where uh, it doesn't matter if somebody knows i am praying and they appreciate me or if they don't know at all let's say that i'm praying so much i've set aside time for intercession it's fine so when we are in that place we have very strong spiritual um, you know like that inner person is very strong very mature uh, so that is required otherwise what happens is uh, we feel bad like i'm praying so much nobody is appreciating me whereas you get that in other ministries where people see you but in prayer ministry nobody sees you got it so that makes it even more hard for a person to engage in prayer ministry uh, but we need to be obedient to god if god is saying no i want you in the prayer ministry you will be 
obscure, cut away from the view of people, but you still got to do it because that's what God is calling us to do. So uh, that is another challenge. Even though it's a great ministry, recognition by men uh, is something that we may not get. But what should make us happy? No recognition from men, but recognition from God, right? So God is watching us all the time. God is hearing us all the time. That is what uh, we are happy about. That should make us very happy. Okay, So that is something about prayer ministry. Now, when we are talking about uh, ministering in prayer, okay, uh, Sister Gertrude has a question. You have a question, sister? I can see your hand raised. Uh, yes, sister. I, uh, not a question. I just want to testify. Mm -hmm. I used to have a ministry for children, and I used to get funds, and I used to provide for their education, books, like yearly fees for the mm -hmm. poor children. Mm -hmm. But uh, somehow this ministry, I was there for six, seven years. But many people discouraged me, and, you know, like uh, they said, no, you can't do this, and the, the government authorities will check and all that. But uh, the other day, and I stopped it. And the other day, when I was uh, online with prayer group, one pastor prophesied, he said, you had a ministry and you did so much. And Jesus liked your ministry, though people did not like your ministry. So it was a confirmation like from God that, you know, at least he liked my ministry. Mm, so this is, yes. uh, I just wanted to say, sister. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Gertrude. So the same point that we were making, right? God must recognize. Imagine if people say everything is good, but God says, I don't like your ministry. What's the point? Okay. So, uh, yeah, thanks for sharing. So whatever we do must be pleasing to God. Uh, and that's what we desire. Uh, and uh, Brother Sanjay says here about prayer ministry, it calls for discipline and sacrifice um, like top performing athletes. Uh, so true, yeah. So it, it requires that kind of a focus. Um, now let's think a little bit more about the, the prayer ministry, engaging in prayer as a ministry. And we will look at um, this man, uh, Epaphras. Um, Paul writes to the church of the Colossians. He, he hasn't gone there, but he writes a letter. Okay, uh, So in Colossians chapter 4, verses 12 and 13, he mentions Epaphras. He says, Epaphras, who is one of you, a born servant of Christ, greets you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. For I bear him witness that he has a great zeal for you. And those who are in Laodicea and those in Herapolis. I'll read one more uh, uh, scripture, which is also given in our notes. Colossians 1, 7, where he says, As you also learned from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf. So at this point, what is happening is that um, Epaphras has come to visit Paul. Okay, he's with Paul when Paul writes a letter to the Colossians and then he will um, sort of send the message with uh, um, these men. So he's writing about Epaphras and what does he describe this man as? Look at that. It's, he says, Epaphras, who is one of you, he uses the word born servant of Christ. Okay, that is the description for a man who is in prayer ministry. We don't read about Epaphras as a preacher, teacher, nothing like that. Prayer ministry. But he's using the term bond servant of Christ. What else does he use to describe this man? He says, he's laboring fervently for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Then what else? So he's laboring fervently. The third one is, uh, he has a great zeal. He has a great zeal for you and for the people of Laodicea and Hierapolis. So he has a great zeal. And uh, later he says, fellow servant, faithful minister. 
of Christ on your behalf. So the reason why I am reading all this is, see, usually when you um, see the writings of Paul, he, he'll say uh, an apostle and a bond servant of Christ. So bond servant of Christ is generally used uh, for somebody who is in, uh, in you know, some kind of a notable ministry, like an apostle. Okay. Uh, but why is it that Paul is using bond servant of Christ for a person who is in prayer ministry? Because in our minds, prayer ministry is kind of secondary. You know what I mean? We feel like apostle is great, prophet is great, uh, teacher, pastor, evangelist. These are all mighty men and women of God. They have the anointing, the calling. Somebody who is in prayer, prayer ministry. Yeah, it's okay. You're not part of the fivefold ministry. But the respect that Paul gives Epaphras, he says, Epaphras, a born servant of Christ, meaning he's giving equal respect, the respect they, that he may have given to somebody in the fivefold ministry offices. Okay. So the point is, those whom God calls for prayer ministry, it's a very special ministry. Okay. It's not. Um, something low, uh, something not important. No. Then why is Paul saying bond servant of Christ? You got it? So it is a very important ministry. If God calls us for prayer, it's a very, very important ministry. Then what else does he say? He says, laboring fervently. We think people who are uh, teaching the word, people who are pastoring, you know, people who are um, apostles, they are the ones who are working very hard. They are the ones who are laboring, right? Uh, but he says, this man, Epaphras, bond servant of Christ, laboring fervently. So is it possible to work hard in prayer? Is it possible? What do you think? Yes, laboring fervently. So here is a man who's working hard in prayer. Okay, do you all recall, I told you a story about Father Nash, how he went to pray for many weeks and months. They used to pray, pray, pray. And then Charles Finney, he saw uh, a great number of people come to Christ because of the laboring fervently in prayer. So it's possible to work hard in prayer also. You got it? Uh, so this is what we understand from prayer ministry. Uh, and what else does Paul say? He says, laboring fervently for what? Laboring fervently for you in prayers so that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. So if we compare it with, let's say, teaching ministry or pastoral ministry, what is our responsibility? Teaching, pastoral ministry. Anyone? Yeah? Yeah, preaching God's word, but what, what should be the result of preaching the word? Okay, we, we may preach, you know, Sundays we may preach one hour, one and a half hours, depending on where you are, right? Some places they, they like long sermons, some places they like short sermons. Uh, so yeah, someone's preaching regularly, teaching regularly, but what should be the result of preaching and teaching? Hmm? I am not able to hear you very clearly, Nelson. It's echoing. Whatever preacher is teaching to the believers, hmm. so he will uh, hope for uh, to, from them to they will they must miss whatever he teaches. He they will work on that or they will catch those things. Okay, they'll catch those things. I agree with you. What should be the final outcome? Let's imagine there's a preacher is preaching for whatever 20 years and he has a congregation. They're listening to him for 20 years. What should happen at the end of those 20 years? Just Le Leaders roughly. must come out from the believers. Okay, leaders must come out. Okay, yeah. then what is the ultimate goal?
to preach lot of sermons to write lot of books okay but what should be the result i'm asking you what should be the outcome okay people's hearts should change hmm. Hmm? share the word of god with others all correct answers i'm saying ultimate ultimate result people should be saved for the kingdom of god that that's correct people should be saved come into the kingdom of god okay lots of answers here discipling the people equipping the saints spiritual growth drawing close to god prepare for heaven okay uh, yeah very true fine all correct answers but you see ultimately what we want is uh we'll we'll see that scripture uh, in galatians 4:19 paul says that christ may be formed in you understood so the result of everything is to become more like jesus romans 8:29 ultimately to be conformed into the image of christ so the labor labor teaching preaching what is what, what is that labor to produce it should produce a people who are like jesus in character and in power everyone got it so that is the reason why let's say a, a teacher of the word so how should we teach we should teach in such a way that people can understand they can learn they can grow they can move closer and closer to becoming more like jesus so how should we pastor same way we guide the people we counsel the people we we nurture the people right so that they can go closer and closer to becoming more like jesus then of course there are many other things like for them to identify god's purpose for their lives each one has a purpose isn't it so we need to we need to help each one recognize what is god calling us to do uh, and uh, then we help them to grow to mature then they should become uh, people who will disciple others so this whole process continues so all this labor in other words what is labor hard work hard work okay when it comes to uh, say uh, your pastoral ministry or teaching ministry or apostolic ministry it's all towards this discipling people raising them up in their full potential uh, in the calling that god has given them so that each of us all of us together can be more like jesus in our character in the power through our lives okay but notice paul says that epaphras is laboring fervently so that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of god so the same way that we expect five fold ministry offices to um serve us to become more like jesus even through prayer ministry it is possible understood that's what it means the labor of one man in prayer is leading people to become more like christ so the point that we are trying to make is prayer ministry is not second class ministry got it this is also very important and that is why uh, paul is saying same labor laboring fervently so that you may be perfect in the will of god even someone who is praying their prayer can affect us in that way got it uh, so that that is why we should not look at prayer ministry as something weak or um, you know sad oh why is god calling me for prayer if he would have called me to be something else right like uh, if you would call me to be an apostle great he's telling me you do prayer ministry what is this ministry we shouldn't think like that it's a very important ministry god values it there is great impact and influence through prayer ministry and another thing we see is a uh, great zeal it talks about the zeal that epaphras had to pray for people not just in colosse but also in other cities now zeal means enthusiasm uh so hopefully people who are in 
various ministries let's say fivefold ministry take for example a prophet he is enthusiastic about his ministry he or she they are very enthusiastic about their ministry about hearing from god prophesying you know making a difference uh, in uh, people's lives even somebody who is given prayer ministry uh, can be very enthusiastic they are very excited about praying for people so as in when you hear needs as in when you hear prophetically you know revelation remember we said sometimes god will put things in our hearts why to pray so that enthusiasm is required even when it comes to prayer ministry so these are all requirements and uh, we see that paul speaks very respectfully of someone who is in prayer ministry so let's continue to look at a few more things about prayer ministry uh, do you remember when we talked about um jesus uh jesus is teachings on prayer we said in uh, matthew 6 i will read okay maybe somebody can read matthew 6 verses 5 and 6 we we've, we've already seen this passage but we'll we'll do it again matthew 6 verses mm. 5 and 6 yes and when you pray huh. you shall not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men i certainly i say to you they have their reward but you when you pray go into your room and when you have shut your door pray to the your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly okay so when it comes to prayer ministry again god invites us to the secret place okay so we spend a lot of time in the secret place uh speaking to god hearing from god laboring for people but we should always remember whether it is personal prayer or it is a uh, ministry we are praying for others prayer ministry god will reward us openly okay so that is the privilege of prayer we spend time in secret but what is god's promise he will reward us openly okay so this must be a motivation for us uh, that okay no problem nobody knows me i'm doing this ministry but one day god will reward me openly that is a great motivation for us when it comes to prayer ministry right you can trust in god uh, that he will give us the results now we will learn a lot about prayer there are so many more chapters and uh, a lot of depth uh, when you know we consider prayer uh, for now i'll just touch on some of these these um, uh, truths about prayer we find that prayer is like an incense okay incense um, i don't know what you call it in hindi anyone like a fragrant uh, smoke kind of a thing okay uh, when you look at the temple right that's how they used to to um, keep the incense in the temple in the tabernacle in the presence of god where they will light it and uh, it it used to go up in the presence of god so it's a fragrant uh, sort of a, a smoke it would go up in the presence of god so you see the psalmist he says in psalm 141 and verse 2 let my prayer be set before you as incense the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice so it's somewhat like this when we pray to god it is very pleasing or it makes god happy whenever we pray our prayers are pleasing to god it goes before him like an incense so in the tabernacle in the temple what did god say let the incense burn you shouldn't stop it let it keep rising up isn't it so our prayers today are the incense that go before god so every time we pray every time we intercede we can imagine our all our prayers are like incense it's going up before the lord okay there are other passages from the book of uh, revelation 
would uh, somebody please read revelation 5 and verse 8 Can I read, sister? Yes, yes, sister Gertrude. Revelation 5 verse 8. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Mm. So this is a picture in heaven. Um, sister, can you read again, please, if you don't mind? Now, when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Okay, thank you. So it paints a picture in the presence of God and um, uh, it, it shows us that in heaven there are golden bowls full of incense in, in God's presence. Okay, so there are golden bowls full of incense. What is that incense? What, what is that incense? Answer is there only. Prayers of the saints. Correct. So it's right there. Uh, the answer is just in the continuing statement there. Golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So it's almost like our prayers are getting collected in the presence of God. And it is like incense before him. It makes him happy. Okay, so uh, that's how God looks at our prayer and our intercession. Now let's read one more passage, Revelation 8, verses 3 and 4. Who would like to read this one? Ma'am. Yes. Revelation 8, verses 3 and 4. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that... He should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, altar which was before the throne. Mm. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saint ascended before God from the angel's hand. Okay, thank you. So same thing. You know, there's a golden um, um, bowl. Uh, the prayers of the saints are collected as incense. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascends before God from the angels' hands. So the point that we want to make is our prayers are not unnoticed. Because we cannot see with our physical eyes immediate results through prayer. Sometimes it can be very uh, tough for our flesh. Because what does our flesh wants? It wants, it wants to see, it wants to feel, you know, it wants to touch. But when we are engaged in prayer ministry, we need to have faith that the prayers that we are praying, God is listening to them. Our prayers are going up as incense before the Lord. All our intercession, it is going up before the Lord as incense and uh, that God is watching, God is listening, God is hearing. So can you imagine if you close your eyes and see a picture of heaven and the smoke, right? Going up from the golden um, bowl before God, it's going up. Those are all your prayers. Those are all my prayers. Okay. And God keeps the intercession before his eyes. He's happy about it. It's very pleasing to him. So these are all encouragements for an intercessor. When we pray um, behind closed doors, the God who sees us in secret will reward us openly. That is a motivation. Second, our prayers are like incense. They go up before God. That again is a motivation. So we can go ahead and keep praying. Now there are a couple of things that um, we, we want to also touch on. And that is when we are engaged in prayer ministry, um, there can be some... Uh, attitudes or some behaviors which may not be correct 
okay so we'll touch on that uh, what do you think is there anything that a person who's in prayer ministry could do wrong if you can think of something you can share okay i think it's similar to all other yeah nelson you have a point yeah ma'am just suppose i prayed for someone mm. and he received the answer okay then i may feel like because of me he got yeah. the answer and this yeah. thing so i i think that is there in all ministries that sense of pride no we want to take pride um, we want to have feel proud for any results whereas we should actually give god the glory so yeah we may feel that way uh, that you know we um, uh, take the glory god's glory for what has happened in someone's life so that we should not do uh, i even i've heard many times you know uh, people say uh, something like uh, oh even to a, some political things they'll say oh i prayed i prayed for this man that's why he became prime minister i feel like only your prayers is it <laughs> only because of your prayers he became the prime minister it's not like that now we don't know who how many people are praying we don't know right because prayer ministry is done in secret so for us to try to take credit oh i prayed this person got a job i prayed they got married i prayed they had children that's not very nice to to you know show off or brag about our prayer ministry that is something we can avoid because it's not very christ like to uh, you know brag about ourselves in prayer ministry in any ministry because whatever we do we do by the grace of god right and we thank god for the opportunity that we got the opportunity to pray or to minister or to serve so in a humble way god expects us to serve uh, so never go around you know proudly stating i prayed so this happened i prayed that happened so that is something we can avoid anything else good good thought good answer anything else to avoid when it comes to prayer ministry wrong prayer sister okay yeah to pray right prayers aligned to the word of god sure yeah that's also something to note um sonia says um uh, to be judgmental uh, sonia could you could you please elaborate how how to be judgmental yes maybe when uh, one receives a request uh, for prayer uh, may not be something in our opinions that is right, you know i mean mm -hmm. it could be something that we that could be uh, uh, judged mm -hmm. and so okay. maybe perhaps uh, we should not judge that person's uh, situation for okay. or, or, or why they are requesting prayer in that particular yeah. situation sure sure that makes sense yeah to just be open right so they have a need yes. they're sharing it with us we'll just go before god and pray that uh, whatever is the right thing god will do it in their lives okay sure to not be judgmental uh, about people thanks sonia thank you for that point uh, anything else that comes to your mind that we should not do when we are in prayer ministry okay sometimes um, along the lines of you know being uh, proud or uh, bragging ab about ourselves we can we can use that identity to promote ourselves for example you know we go somewhere we meet someone uh, we may we may like to say hey i'm a pastor so that people will look at us oh pastor and then they'll give you the respect right but uh, actually there's no need you can just mention your name you can just be like a normal person because there's no need to mention where it's not required similarly when it comes to interse intercession to promote ourselves we could 
tell everybody you know i am an intercessor god has called me for intercessory ministry i am an intercessor i am an intercessor so when we do that what what are we trying to do yes there is a right place to mention that but if we are mentioning it everywhere it's just promotion like we are trying to promote ourselves we are trying to get people's attention um that uh, you know i god has called me for for intercession and uh, you need to respect me because of uh, what god has called me to do so promoting ourselves like any other ministry you know let people decide if truly through our lives um let's say prophecy prophetic right uh, when we are prophesying we don't have to tell that we have a prophetic gift people will recognize oh this person very accurate they have a prophetic anointing let people tell you got it that's the right way of um, growing in our calling instead of making people tell that i am an intercessor i am a pastor i am a prophet right so we avoid that we don't self promote ourselves just do the praying if god wants people to recognize that you are an intercessor they will because they will see the impact of your prayer life like today we are talking about you know john hyde father nash they did not go around saying i am an intercessor i am an intercessor but through their lives we have seen the impact that is why today we recognize them as intercessors so the self promotion is a problem in every ministry and we must avoid that even in um, prayer mm. yeah and uh, the bible says that when we pray for others we receive a blessing on our own lives so that again is an encouragement yes sir uh... hmm i can hardly hear you yes yes yeah reach out to people for what Hmm. Yeah, see. Inform. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. See, information and um, promotion there's a very thin line. So, we just have to be very discreet and judicious. Okay? To uh, know when to share and how to share. So, I you will figure that out yeah so i'm not saying don't tell anyone at all i'm just saying stay away from self promotion yeah does it make sense or doesn't okay great so the last point that i was making was uh, when we pray for others god blesses us so in job 42 and verse 10 it says and the lord restored job's losses when he prayed for his friends indeed the lord gave job twice as much as he had before so when job prayed for others what did god do god bless job twice got it so again this is a motivation because it's a tough job intercessory ministry is very tough uh, there's no recognition in it but when you think of the rewards or the benefits it motivates us okay it's it's not a waste of time somebody is being impacted plus god will bless me right we will receive blessings when we pray for others okay so with that i'm going to stop but if you have anything to ask uh or maybe after the break okay so we'll stop right here you can go ahead take a break uh, please come back at uh, 11 o'clock and we will proceed from there thank you